Hello everybody and welcome to my third video in this series. This is um, about the soldiers. And if you haven't seen my last one, that was for support because I have support soldiers and the medics and this one's on the soldiers. So let's go to this here. Okay, so the most important thing out of everything is the Great Commission. And this is what Jesus told us right before he left. And that is this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And that's Matthew 28, 19. And the interesting part, um, you know, it's called the Great Commission. If you notice in commission, you know, it says mission. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of cool. So I took notes on that. Um, but this this is what we're up against there's there's three different things that he showed me and the first thing is the evil which is obvious to even worldly people it, it's obvious to everybody you know um, and, and these are basically the easiest way to think of this if you don't know what evil is because the way the world's going now it's like evil's becoming good and good's becoming evil um think of the opposite of the ten commandments um that's what evil is so what i have for that is this Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. So, people, not necessarily people, but the evil that works through people um, are so scared to expose their evil deeds that they, it's almost impossible it's not impossible with God, but it's so hard for them to come to the light because they're so consumed with evil. Um, they can't stand us talking, <laughs> you know, believers uh, preaching or teaching the word, um, stuff like that. Um, the second one, is the world itself and what that means if you don't know um th this is stuff like what the world tells you about you you have to have the best job no you don't you you do not <laughs> um that means nothing um you you know like you have to have all this money, you got to keep making more money and more money and more money and success and money and money and, and buy all these possessions and you have to have a house and you have to have this and you have to have that. Um, Jesus does not care about these things. This this is worldly stuff. Um, you could be some guy living in a box and you could be more in the light than somebody that has exalted themselves because of their their power and their money and their job or whatever um, there's a verse I wanted to share actually um, there's three different verse, verses and they're in Ephesians here it says as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins 
which basically means, you know, even though we're physically alive, if you're so full of sin in, in the world, worldly ways that are going against what God says, you're basically dead. <laughs> um, then it says, in which you used to live, so this is talking about um, believers when you follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient so the, the ruler of the kingdom of the air is basically the antichrist which, which is all over the place now as, as we can plainly see, and some people probably can't, but, um, and, and this evil spirit is working in the world, basically trying to take over everything or make it seem like he is, you know, because obviously Jesus already won this for us when he died on the cross. So that doesn't even matter. So it can, it can look as, you know, a lot of things look a certain way, but it, it means nothing. It, it's just what we're living in here. Uh, the third part of that is all of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest we were by nature deserving of wrath. So following your flesh is basically what you want. You know, everything is about, you know, and, and you see this a lot nowadays where everything is about me, 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 me. Let, let's exalt myself. Let's put myself as my own God. And, and, and it's, it's it, I see it. Um, it it's crazy. But, but that's what that's about. And the third thing is religion. And this can be tricky because a lot of these, um, you know, people that call themselves Christians, um, these churches, and I'm not saying everybody, you know, there's, there's, it, it's a mix. It, it, it's like the real, what I call the real Christians. Some are mixed in with this. It, it's almost like they're camouflaged. It, it, can, it can be really um, hard to figure out sometimes. But if, if you read the Bible, the Bible should be your only source no matter what these different religions or denominations are telling you. Because, you know, this this is a lot like what Jesus said in the Bible about the Pharisees. Um, you know, they have repetitive sayings, you know, like saying the same thing over and over and over. And, and do I talk, you know, do we talk to each other like that? No. I, I don't sit here and, and say, you know, some people do with like, hi, how you doing? Like over and over and over, which it's just, that's nothing. <laughs> but I just had to throw that in there. But I, I mean, like, you know, these repetitive things like prayers, you're, you're saying the same thing over and over. It's not coming from your heart. It's not coming from your soul. You're not, you're supposed to be, when you pray, you're supposed to be speaking to God, like you know, how we speak to each other. I, I don't read the same script over and over and over and over and over every time I talk to somebody, and I don't think anybody does really, you know. Um, and and some of this is like man-made, made-up rules and, and commands that have absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. So. If, you know, if you belong to a, a church or something, 
And I'm not saying that all this is bad because there's a lot of good kind of hidden inside these things. You, you really have to have discernment on what's going on. But, um, you know, because some of it follows the Bible and some of it doesn't. But the way to do this is, you know, these different things that they're teaching. Um, check with the Bible. It, that's that's your best because the Bible's the truth. That's the best way to go. And and as soon as you see like, wait a minute, it doesn't tell me I have to do this or something. You you'll know like what it is. But I wanted to show you this that goes with the religion. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. And a lot of that has to do with you know, like these different people that um, teach and preach and, um, you know, pastors or junior pastors, stuff like that. Um, they'll, they'll keep telling you and telling you and telling you all these things, teaching you things, but yet they go home and they hit the bottle <laughs> or they go home and they're beating their kids or beating their wife or yelling at somebody or cussing and swearing you know it, it's it's all fake they're not real it's not coming from their heart um and and sometimes even you have you have to like keep checking yourself i have to check myself all the time um and, that, and that's why it says you know think before you speak don't just keep talking and talking and talking and throwing you know because um the the power of life and death is in your tongue and it's what you say so you have to think first discern what it is and then say it you don't have to constantly talk listen twice as hard that's why they say we have two ears <laughs> um so that that's part of that and um, you know we we all do get tired and weary it's obvious we have to sleep every night you know um, so we have to recharge our batteries basically is what I'm saying um, you know, and there's certain ways to do this. One of these ways to recharge is with prayer. Um, as you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. And that's in Second Corinthians. Um, so prayer is and I'll go into this in a minute here, is you talking to God, telling him what's going on. Um, the second one to recharge is praise. And in Psalm 151 through two, it says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. And, you know, in Joshua and a lot of other places in the Bible, because um, David talks about it a lot too, um, because obviously Psalms is David. Um, praising actually defeats things um, God loves this he absolutely loves it he, that's why the, the angels are are always 
praising him and singing in the heavens. And the third one is reading the word. And it says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. And that's for reading your Bible also helps you recharge. And what kind of goes along with recharging, and I have it in the top corner up here, is Ephesians 5.19, which says, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. You know, like I was just saying, um, he, he loves this. It, it And it truly, truly, especially for me, because one of my gifts is music. And I, I absolutely love it. And, and there's some kind of power in it. it. I mean, if you just sit back and just listen, and, and it, it's almost like your, your soul, like... It, it does something for your soul. Um, it really does. It's pretty wild, but that's another way that you can recharge. And then there's two ways for communication. Two main ways. It's kind of like, a, you know, like a soldier with a walkie-talkie, or you know, now they probably use phones or email or whatever but it, it it's kind of like that where um let's see what i have here. the incoming so your incoming communication it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and that's from john 1 1 and the word is Jesus because Jesus was with God in the beginning and um, so the way to do that is you know when you read your Bible and I kind of have an example here from something you know in the 80s um, there is this movie called Never Ending Story and it, it's about this boy who goes to this bookstore um, the guy at the bookstore gives him this book he goes to the, his school and he actually sneaks upstairs into like an attic or something and he just starts reading and, and the more he reads the more this book starts speaking to him and it, it just reminded me of that movie and it's so crazy because this actually happens as you're reading the bible as you keep reading and reading you know maybe in the beginning it'll just be like words or what's this or this is a story or but everything that's in there doesn't literally mean what it says if you have the holy spirit it will start speaking to you especially if you're looking for answers you you might see something like wow what that this is crazy this you know this is how God speaks to us but how we speak to him is through prayer and Jesus taught us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 9 through 13 if you want to read that um, and, and a lot of us know this already but an example of like what I personally do and you, you do whatever works for you is you know first when I pray I always try to give thanks for, for everything I can possibly think of um, even things that seem like we automatically have every single day but because you never know how long these things might last it might go away like that you know it you never know and, and even small things you know like Oh, 
you know, thank you for this pen so that I can write things down because if I didn't have it, you know, it, simple things, it might seem dumb, you know, but he hears these things. And, you know, the second thing is um, asking for forgiveness. You know, like if, if you, because sometimes you catch yourself during the day and, and you slip, you know, because we're not perfect. We're, we're living in a fallen world and none of us are perfect. You know, we, we do things every day. We might not even know some of the things that we're even doing. So it's important to ask for forgiveness. And the third thing I do is I, I always pray for others before myself. I, I don't like exalting myself above others. So I, I personally pray for others first, and then I pray for myself. So hopefully this helps somebody out there. And, and these are things that the soldiers are doing because the ways we fight aren't the worldly ways. Um, it's totally different. Um, the ways we fight are, are through the word through praying, um, by doing basically the opposite that you would normally think of, you know, like, you know, I think I gave an example of this in another video, like, you know, if somebody comes at you and you just start screaming and hollering, cussing, swearing at you or something, you know, bless them back, you know. I, I gave an example to um, somebody, I don't want to say who, but <laughs> like somebody kept picking on him and I said, you know what, try this. Try just when they're picking on you, just say, God bless you and see what happens, you, you know, because that might put the other people, whoever it is, you know, in, in such shock like wait a minute this, this guy should be cussing swearing back at me why is he blessing me now you know it, it I might throw him off and be like you know something might happen but that's that's just an example there's a lot of things you know like if somebody if you borrow something to somebody and don't worry about ever getting it back just just do it because God will supply your needs one way or another when you when you need it at the right time because it, it's happened to me I had to um, give up all kinds of personal possessions that I had for years and you know I and I'll, and I'll be honest like it, it was driving me crazy like I'm like I can't believe that I got rid of this I had I had no clothes now I have you know, know this or that, and there's a verse for that too. Um, stuff like that, but then, you know, I moved to a different location, and all of a sudden, um, I got blessed with this laptop that I'm using for this. I got, I got clothes coming in, bags of clothes, and I, I don't even know how these things happen. So, you know, it does happen. But um, I hope this helps someone um, stay strong, be a soldier. It's one of the most important things that we're called to do, especially from, you know, what Jesus said in the Great Commission. So God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you.